work analyst Melody Wright is doing to reveal the true state of the U.S. real estate market. So I'm thrilled we have the good fortune to sit down with Melody herself today to hear her latest assessment straight from the horse's mouth. Melody, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Adam. I'm very happy to be here and thank you for having me. Oh, it's a real pleasure. I've been following you on Twitter for a good while now. Um, and uh, the moment that Danielle, you know, basically called attention to, you know, some of your latest work, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, I, I, how could I not uh, reach out to you to invite <laughs> you on? Thank you for coming on on short notice. Absolutely. Um, got a lot of questions here for you, but if we can, let's just start with a very general one. Feel free to answer it any way you like. What's your current assessment of the U.S. real estate market? Yeah, so it's a complicated answer, right? And I think that um, my last Substack post was called the messy, muddy middle. Um, and so to answer that, uh, you know, I've been I've been here before. Uh, I started a mortgage in 2006. And so I, I kind of wrote out 2007, 2008. And it, and it feels very uh, familiar in terms of we absolutely thought that the housing market was going to be turning around based on all the data that we were looking at at the time. And we had a lot of hope up until probably late 2009 and 2010. Um, and even in 2010, when there was a refi boom. But right now what's happening is we're in the middle. And, and I refer to this often as in the soup, meaning that there's different metrics that are gonna make things look rosier than they are. You know, For instance, home prices are gonna look higher when the only people that are able to transact are the ones that can actually buy those higher, you know, priced homes. And so we're getting, you know, one day we get a, a, a survey that says builder confidence is down. The next day we get a report that says, um, you know, new home sales is up. You know, we get a report that says pending sales is up and then we get existing sales are down. And so we're kind of in this in-between space where uh, pretty much anybody can jump onto something and, and say, you know, things are going well or things are not going so well. We kind of have both stories. But to me, you know, I'm not really um, interested in predictions. Uh, I'm interested in the path. And what I can say to you is that um, the path that we're on is not good. And the, and, the, and the reason I can say that is not only due to all the research that I've done, not only due to kind of my experience in mortgage finance and housing, um, but because I went out on the road in February, I kind of woke up one day, Joe from Bloomberg was like, the housing market's turning around. And I'm like, are you crazy? I mean, <laughs> there's no way we've just... We've built so much inventory, you know, on the multifamily with the built to rent, with the short term rental, but nobody was really looking at that whole picture. I mean, you know, Nick Gurley was looking at the demographics and some of that picture, but it just felt like there was just pieces missing. And my understanding of mortgage kind of helped me really understand how this machine works. And so I got up. And I, I really, within about two days, made the decision to get in my car <laughs> and drive to Austin and Nashville and Charlotte and Orlando and other cities and just tour these new build sites because I just, I couldn't understand it. I was looking at the permits, but I was also, you know, reading Ivy Zellman's uh, surveys. I mean, I am a huge fan of hers. Um, and I was just like, something's not, you know, adding up here. And so when I got to Nashville, when I got to Austin, I was like, oh my goodness, like how can there be this many new build sites, this many subdivisions and our permit data doesn't really tell that story. You know, Ivy's not seeing all of it. She was seeing a lot of it at the time. Um, and, and I just went out and had to see for myself. And so I can tell you absolutely <laughs> that based on what I've seen on the road from these new build sites, that the path is not good. And most of these are are priced in a way that your ordinary American cannot afford it. So it's as if everyone in these cities in Charlotte, Austin, Nashville, built for the super rich, built for the luxury. And the same was in the multifamily that you would see, you know, huge multifamily complexes, empty, uh, but luxury. And so, you know, when I came back, I'm like, we've got inventory. We don't have affordable inventory. And then, you know, that was kind of in February and I took a little break and started watching the news again. And then you kind of had the builders start to get some momentum with these new home, new homes. And I had kind of 
already said that myself. We had pin up demand. You could see it. Um, but everybody was surprised for some reason. And then I went back um, out on the road to Phoenix and Las Vegas, which was just very shocking. Um, I, I call it an inf infestation, a swarm of these spec homes. They're just everywhere. And, and one of the reasons why some of the other analysts don't know this is because you had private builders, the people that don't respond to Ivy survey <laughs> and kind of like glob on to the big multi, the, the national builders, you would go onto these things called mega sites, Adam, where they would have you know, Lennar, Toll, and then your smaller builders all in one site. It was just, it was one of the most overwhelming um, experiences to come back and just no one else sees this, hardly anyone else. And so I can say that the housing market, despite what all of our data is saying, and I can give a lot of reasons for that, you know, we've seen that um, responses to surveys are way down, you know, that's, and a lot of these, the survey cons of construction is a survey and um, that's how, and, and then you have your permit offices that during COVID were very delayed in recording. Uh, even before COVID, like in Los Angeles, it could take you a year to record any document. You layer on COVID, it took a lot longer. And then uh, I recently learned that a lot of the builders don't consider it complete until they record that certificate of occupancy, which is after they've sold it. And so if it's a spec home that's not going to happen <laughs> until someone actually buys it. And so, you know, this is why I think we, we, we have this really disconnected view of what's actually happening out there. So I know that was a long answer, but um, it's not good. There, there is too much uh, inventory, but it's not, it, we have structural issues because everything that's being built is for people that don't exist, meaning we don't have enough Americans to afford what's out there on the road what I, and what I've seen. So. All right. Great, great answer. You give me a lot of things to dig into. Sorry. There. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. Um, so first, I just want to reiterate your point about kind of being in the soup where it sounds like, you know, there's almost a survey out there for anybody that wants to make any kind of narrative about what's going on in the housing market right now, yeah. right? Some things you can tout as, oh, the market's recovering. Some things you can tout as, oh my gosh, it's going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> um, so you're just saying it's a confusing time, which is it why really boots is. on the ground intelligence, like what you're providing, in my opinion, is so valuable because it's yes. not about someone's survey or you know right. a headline. You're actually going out there and you're just looking at units and right. saying, are they occupied or not? And right. I will say um, I've, I've had discussions around what is what 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 could happen with inventory with a number mm -hmm. of folks on this channel. Um, I haven't heard somebody say declaratively like you have. We have too much inventory right now. Of yeah. course, the narrative for so long has been we have way too little inventory. Yes. And, and Nick yeah. Durley, as you mentioned, you know he has been putting up charts that show that we have, I think, more units under construction per capita. Yes than I think we've had in Since the decades. 70s. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yep. So that that's sort of speaking to perhaps a coming easing of this quote unquote inventory problem. Right. But what I hear you saying is, is, okay, we don't have an inventory problem in terms of at least number of units that are out there currently. And then you and I can right. talk about the potential of additional units to come onto the market through right. things yeah. like the short-term rental market and stuff yes. like that. Yeah. Um, but you're saying, no, we, we actually have plenty of units right now. The problem is, is they're not affordable to enough people. And right. there's a stat that I pulled off of your Twitter feed earlier today. Um, it said uh, only 23% of homes in the U.S. are affordable to middle income buyers. And that's coming from the, the NAR, the National Association of Realtors. I, I was really right. shocked that they'd be willing to share a stat <laughs> like that. And apparently right. that that 23%, which is a very low number, that number was 50% just last year. That's right. So we're having a real plummeting in, in, in affordability. 